Hey guys, what's up? I thought I'd do a PlayStation Portable Collection video today. I have done one of these in the past, way, way back. Not even sure if the video is still up on YouTube, it might be that old. But, um, I have a lot of PlayStation Portable games. A lot of them are from my childhood, which is nice. Like, uh, I had a Game Boy Advance as a kid, I had a Game Boy Color before that, but then after the Game Boy, I went from Game Boy to PlayStation Portable, because that's... I got one for Christmas one time, I remember my dad bought me one. And it came with, um, it came with one of the games in here which you will see at some point, it's just... Uh, there's a lot of stuff to show. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. So we'll just start, show, just start holding up games and showing them. The collection is always growing, I'm always on the chase for new PlayStation Portable games. I got one just in the last month. It's just a matter of finding them. There's a lot of stuff that for the PlayStation Portable is very expensive now. Like, um, I love to get stuff like Issei or Trials in the Sky, stuff like that. Or Trials of Heroes. But it's just hard to find stuff like that. You find more stuff that was, um, more commercially available, less niche, you know, kind of junky titles. But I buy stuff when I find it, when I find it on the cheap, you know? So. This was the PlayStation Portable I had. The value pack here. I remember seeing the receipt for this. It was something like 300 bucks when it was brand new, so that was crazy expensive. I have three PlayStation Portables, two here, and then one at the bottom. I believe this was my original one, so it's kind of hard to tell. I remember it being bulky, and then these two are ones that I've found otherwise. I've not found a system in the longest time. My brother got one of these too, so this was like, this was a Christmas present that my dad probably spent over 500 bucks on, which is just crazy, or... Oh shit, he was working at the docks at the time, he might have got this stuff for free. <laughs> you never know. It was a really good Christmas present, like I played this so much and I still play it. I remember um, my brother gave me his PlayStation Portable and it like broke instantly. He didn't take very good care of it. I don't, he didn't really play it at all either. He's, he plays video games a little bit but he's not a gamer at all. Like I think he has, I think he has a PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 and he just uses it to watch Netflix but that's his thing. Never been much of a gamer. Like he played games as a kid a lot as we all did, but didn't really play them once he discovered women, I guess. We have a ton of games here. We'll just start going through them. No real rhyme or reason, no order. I'm going to go through these because I can kind of figure out what I have as doubles. And afterwards I can actually like put them in alphabetical order like the rest of my collection. So we have something I got recently, Pac-Man World 3. I'd love to have this on PS2, but just for now, PlayStation Portable is the way to go. PlayStation Portable had a lot of these, which is just like PS2 ports, which is kind of weird, because it's never as good as the PS2 version, but... Oh well. The whole thing felt like a kind of experiment from Sony, and... From what I know, the PlayStation Portable was very popular, and the PlayStation Vita just completely tanked. Dungeon Siege, Throne of Agony, there's a lot of these kind of games as well, just um, like Diablo style clones from Take-Two Interactive. It's an okay game, it's not fantastic, but it's a cool um, cool dungeon crawler. Battlezone, I think this is on PS2 as well. Vehicular Combat, it's okay. Field Commander, this is a strategy game. There's a fair number of strategy games on the PSP as well, it's um... It's a good system for simpler kind of games like this. Well, I say simple as in not graphically intense. Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops Plus. There are some really good Metal Gear Solid games on the PlayStation Portable. Do not sleep on these. These are a lot of fun. I believe this is um. Yeah, I think this is just like a bunch of different missions. I'm not sure if this had like a giant story like Peace Walker did. You will see later on in the video. Or if you really want. There you go. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. This is an official game in the series, so you do have to play this to fully understand the Metal Gear Solid kind of uh, franchise story. 
And God knows there's a lot of story in them. I have the Japanese version and I have the uh, PAL copy, so nice to have both of them, I guess. Doesn't really matter. I'm sure this one is just completely in Japanese, like you probably can't play it in English. So you, you want an English copy if you only speak English. Like me. 300 March to Glory. This was a very popular game back in the day, I remember. One of my friends had this game. Because remember the uh, movie 300 was also very popular. Not very good though. Graphics are very bad. Merton Wars. Another strategy game. This is a strategy game on a grid. It's not too bad. It's pretty fun. It's like uh, humans versus aliens. I like it. It's a lot of fun actually. It's pretty good. Puyo Pop Fever puzzle game. Got this one on the cheap. It was like three bucks. Puyo Pop is always good. A lot of these games out there. If you have a PlayStation Portable, might as well pick it up. Some of these still have their price tags on them. Like uh, Grip Shift. I bought this when I was on clearance, four bucks. At EB Games. Like when EB Games is selling something for four bucks, that means they want it gone. Show like, manuals and stuff. This one, it, it's good. It's a lot like a roll cage on the PlayStation 1. It's a good racing game. Star Wars Lethal Alliance, not a very good game at all. They were hyping this up a lot when it came out, I remember. I think it was, um, it released around the same time as The Force Unleashed, so I was like... They're talking about this as like the companion game. This is kind of before they killed the Star Wars franchise, but like just... There's too much Star Wars shit out now, man. It's too much. I can't keep up with it. I haven't seen a Star Wars movie in years. I, I saw The Force Awakens, I was like, eh, it's okay. I don't really want to see the rest now. Monster Hunter Freedom 2, Monster Hunter games, they're all the same. They're good though. Monster Hunter games, they're all really good. A lot of RPGs on the PlayStation Portable as well, this is a good one to get. Popo La Croix, I believe that's how you say it. This is, um, it reminds me a lot of the old Final Fantasy games, like Humble Beginnings, Small Town, then a giant force comes in and kind of destroys a lot of stuff. I love the artwork on this game. It really reminds me of something like a Nazca of the Valley of the Wind. Really got high detail, 2D graphics. This, this was a really good one. Check this out. It's only like, it's a short game too. Yeah, 30 hours long. That's not super long for an RPG. Definitely check that one out. Online Chess Kingdoms. Bought it for 4 bucks in an op shop. I thought, eh, I'll buy it. Back when I wasn't so selective. Darkstalkers Chronicles, the Chaos Tower, Aussie PAL version. Cool to get. This is a really fun game, like, it's just the Darkstalkers games. Darkstalkers, very underrated fighting game series. It's like, the fighting game series based around, like, horror characters, like, it's really cool. And Fat Princess, Fistful of Cake, one of the more popular franchises to come out of the PlayStation Portable. This also had a, uh... PSN release, which is really fun. It's just a really good game. You have to uh, kidnap a princess and bring her to your tower. Um, you, uh, you fatten the princess up so that the other team has trouble carrying her. It's very fun, very creative. We're just, we're just getting started here. There's a fair amount of these Battlefront games as well. I think there's three. Elite Squadron. Let me give that one a clean. Got a nest up in the back. I played a lot of those back in the day. There's a lot of these too, these are uh, just uh, old game collections, like the retro collections. Activision Hits Remixed, it's just all of their old Atari games, and they're still fun. Very fun. Another RPG, this one from Ubisoft, it's not as good. Astonisha Story, it's okay. From memory, it's, uh, it's a strategy RPG, so like, you're on the grid, you... Move your character around to attack enemies. It's okay, it's not the best. But if you're looking for RPGs, that one is pretty cheap. Me and my Katamari, this is probably the best Katamari game out there, it's just... The PlayStation Portable really feels good when controlling the Katamari, it's really good. 
Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast. This was on the Xbox, it'd be worth a clean 80 bucks. On the PSP, I think it's worth about 15, 20. A lot of the PlayStation Portable games, they're not super expensive. Because not a whole lot of people collect PSP. It is a very good racing game, though. If you've played Outrun, go it to yourself to play that one, too. Death Junior. This is also on the Wii. I think I have the Wii version. Some weird gunk on the side. Some of the stuff I need to clean. That can be today's, um... I don't have work today, thank god. Yesterday is fucking hell. The Thursday before Easter, I don't know why, it's like... At 8 o'clock at night, I would rather be anywhere else in the world than at a bloody grocery store, but just everybody turned up. Like, I don't even know. Do people have, like, an Easter dinner? We never had that in our family, but, like, everybody came to, to shop. It's like, go home, be with your families. Fucking mourn the death of Jesus, for fuck's sake. Death Junior. Speaking of death. Yeah, this is fun. It's a beat-em-up. Very unique story. No manual there. I believe I got that from EB Games back in the day. It was like four or five bucks. I remember when I, when I... Even when the PSP was popular, it was very hard to find games for it. I remember there was never a big PSP... Um, there was never a big PSP selection. I kind of like that with the... Um, with the handheld games. Like, I never see a giant lot of Nintendo DS or 3DS stuff. Even though those are still very popular. Even back in the day, you never saw that stuff. Capcom Classics Collection Reloaded. I believe this is just like the one on the PS2. Probably has like an exclusive game or two. It has Knights of the Round and the King of Dragons is like the only games you need to play. <laughs> Fantastic beat-em-ups. Breath of Fire 3. This is where I played Breath of Fire. I have it on PS1 as well. I would love to get the original version of this, but the essentials will have to do me. Uh, it's a fantastic game. There's really like deep, kind of... There's deep character exploration in this, like... There's a lot of, kind of, racism built up in the world of this, like, people are against the different kind of classes of people. It's very interesting. I really enjoyed Breath of Fire 3 and like, the ending and how like, you find the characters that had died at the beginning of the game, but they're like, evil now, it's really good, man. If you haven't played Breath of Fire 3, you owe it to yourself. Not super long either, I think this one is like 40 hours. Probably 40 hours, yeah. Plus it's fun to mess around with like the dragon combinations. You can turn your character into like a dragon. But you can uh, combine different, I think, stones to make him into like a different kind of dragon. Like you can make an electric dragon or like a fire dragon. It's really cool. Brothers in Arms D-Day, there's a lot of first-person shooters on the PSP, this one is not very good. None of them are very good. They just, they control weirdly. God of War, Ghost of Sparta, really good game actually, definitely check this one out. Lumens, or Luminous 2. This is also on the Vita, I don't know what happened to this series, it was really fun, I would love to play another Luminous game. This was four bucks, so I thought super cheap. As well as the first game, they're basically just like Tetris clones. I think the idea is you f match, you match like squares, and then they disappear. Instead of like Tetris, where you match a line, you have to match squares. It's good, it's really good. Gets fast as time goes on. It's good stuff. Oh, City of Final Fantasy. I never got into this one. It just didn't appeal to me. Final Fantasy 2, probably the weirdest Final Fantasy game. Like the first Final Fantasy game kind of set everything up for the franchise. And then Final Fantasy 2 kind of changed everything. The deal with Final Fantasy 2 is that, um... It's very dark. A lot of characters die in this. Like, there's a scene where a guy gets crushed by a boulder where it's like... If it was another Final Fantasy game, he wouldn't die. But in this one, he just, he just gets crushed and he's dead. Yeah, it's good. It's good stuff. Artwork on the back is fantastic. I believe I paid five dollars for this back in the day, I don't really remember. But these are worth getting, they're much better than the originals. I mean you can't, I'm not even sure how you would play Final Fantasy 2 if you don't have a Famicom. But this has updated graphics, it has CGI cutscenes that look really good, definitely worth checking out. As is 
the first Final Fantasy also has uh, updated graphics, but not like 3D graphics, updated sprite graphics, which is nice. CGI cutscenes, good stuff. This one's very simple. I don't like the first Final Fantasy game a whole lot, but I can appreciate like just how it changed everything. You know, it took that it took that formula that Dragon Warrior laid down and it, it updated it, made it more playable. You're not spending hours and hours and hours just killing slime so that you can go and kill another slime. A bigger slime. Warriors of the Lost Empire has some value to it. I think it's about a $20 game. It's another dungeon crawler. A lot of dungeon crawlers on this system, I'll show you. The Sega Mega Drive Collection. There's a hundred of these out there. Bomberman Land. Good game. I believe it's a support of a uh, PlayStation 2 game, but it is pretty good. If you play Bomberman, there's a lot of mini games as well. Siphon Filter Dark Mirror. They need to bring back the Siphon Filter games. They're good. Espionage. It's a lot of fun. Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier. I am up to the final boss on this game, but I just cannot beat him. I think I tried like 50 times to beat it. I spent hours and hours trying to beat it, but it was just... It's one of those things, I can't wrap my head around it, I'm sorry. But I got to the very end and then failed, so... I guess the journey was worth it. The Power Stone Collection, good set. I don't know why Capcom doesn't make any more of these. I, I was gonna say Sega because I knew Power Stone was on the Dreamcast, but they should make more of these, I'd buy another one. Just good party battling games. Just, they're fantastic, check them out. If you've not played Fusion Frenzy, that's very similar. Silent Hill Shattered Memories, it kind of pains me to say that this is the way I played this game. Like, I didn't play the Wii version first, I played this version. I'm still on the lookout for the PS2 version. I'll get it someday. It's a weird one. It's kind of a remake of the first game, but it features no combat whatsoever. It's split up into two sections. One section of a level will have you just exploring around an open area, looking for like clues and stuff you can pick up, door keys, things like that. And the second section will be like a running away section. You run from an enemy, you have to avoid them, you have to get to a certain part before the uh, level will end. Very good. Very good, it's just, graphics are very, very bad. It's probably one of the best looking games on the Wii. Probably one of the better looking games on PSP as well, but it's still... Does not look great. Samurai Showdown Anthology Apple is for 8 bucks in a computer exchange. I walked in just as they were putting it out and I got it. Great deal for this. It's like a $25 game. I don't like Samurai Showdown as much as other fighting games, but it is still pretty good. I'll be back in a second. I thought the mailman pulled up, but then I remembered it's Easter Friday, or Good Friday, the uh, mailmen are mourning the death of Jesus Christ. They're not working today. Dragon Ball Z Shin Budokai, it's good. It's just like the other Budokai games. But it does have a few like exclusive levels, which is pretty cool. It's fun. It's also very cheap. Untold Legends Brotherhood of the Blade, I think this is an online game because... Yeah, you can go online with the PSP, or you could back in the day. Four-player wireless multiplayer, that would have been fun. Another, um... Another... Dungeon Crawler. Last little stack for this pile. Marvel the Trading Card Game. I've not really sunk any time into this. Like, I've powered it up to make sure it works, but it looks okay. I'm not really into the card battling games, like the Hearthstones and that, they're not for me. And Valkyrie Profile Leneth, this is a Japanese copy of the game. I do have a... Fortunately, my version is... I do have an Australian version, but it's just the uh, loose disc there, unfortunately. Which kind of sucks, I would love to have an official PAL copy of this, but they're kind of expensive, so I just... It's fine to just have the Japanese copy, like, it's on my shelf, it's there. The artwork is fantastic. 
This is a really unique RPG, by the way. It's an action RPG. You are a uh, kind of angel. You're an angel that gets... Valkyrie. <laughs> it gets... I think you're Lena. I don't remember. You get sent down to Earth to help like the humans battle demons, I think. Something like that. It's been a long time since i played a lot of these. I did finish this one. It's, it is fantastic. There's a lot of like, platforming in this game, too, which is kind of cool. It's a lot like, um... If you played Odin Sphere, it reminds me a lot of that. I love the artwork on some of these games, man. <laughs> For real, they're so good. We'll show the uh, loose disc stuff. We have Kazoom. Two copies of Lego Harry Potter. That's the ones that uh, we have. Is it just the one? Yeah, we have one that never. It's like a pre production one. Suit Forced. I don't know if it's worth anything, but it's kind of cool. Spin out. I have a manual for that somewhere. Print out some artwork for it. Holy Invasion of Privacy Badman. This is a cool game. It's like a uh, reverse RPG. Or a reverse dungeon crawler where you set up the uh, the enemies in a dungeon and then the uh, computer computer like hero comes and tries to defeat them. Marvel Superhero Scott, this one this one is fun, good beat em up. Tokobot, good platformer. It's also on PS2. Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, classic. Lego Batman and Lego Batman. Make sure you can actually see them. There you go. A few doubles, but nobody will buy them. But the PSP is like, if you don't have a good game, you're not going to sell them. My most recent pickup, Innocent Life, a futuristic harvest moon. <laughs> Cannot speak today. I had to print out a cover for this so you can see the old cover behind it, but I think it looks okay. You know, you see it on the shelf like that. You see it against that, and it's like, it's, it looks fine. Not tried it yet, it's supposed to be good. Secret Agent Clank, I remember this was the system seller back in the day. People wanted a PSP so they could play this. I paid four bucks for it at an EV Games. It's really good. It's, uh, it's just like the other Ratchet and Clank games, except you play as Clank. Very humorous. Ghost in the Shell standalone complex. Ghost in the Shell is something I've always been disappointed to when it comes to video game adaptions. It seems like it should be an easy game to adapt to a video game, but there's no good adaption of Ghost in the Shell. The PS1 version where you're controlling the uh, Tachikoma, just the robots, it's not very good. This version is a first person shooter, it's not very good. Maybe it controls better on the uh, PlayStation 2 version, I don't know. This is a very unique game, Half Minute Hero. You have 30 seconds to complete an entire RPG or else the world explodes. Very fun. You do stuff to... It's just, it's really, really fast. I love it. There needs to be more games like this. And there's over 20 hours of gameplay in this thing. It's just 30 seconds at a time. It's very unique. Definitely check out Half Minute Hero if you haven't. Beautiful Joe Red Hot Rumble for four bucks. This is a uh, like a party battling game, released by Clover Studios. It's a lot like uh, Smash Brothers. In a printout artwork for this, Downstream Panic. I remember I bought a bunch of PSP games. This one was like eight bucks, and I was super disappointed because it all came as these bloody generic artwork bullshit. It's like I wouldn't even I wouldn't even take this stuff in if I was running a game store. I'd say I'm sorry, man. We don't take this stuff. I'd want to be buying stuff in that I know someone buying from me would be happy with. Eevee Games doesn't give a shit about that, they just want your money. Yeah, Downstream Panic. Maybe I can print out artwork for it. I'd love to get artwork for this one. Shinobi Day, Shinobi Do Tales of the Ninja. This is like a uh, Tenchu, but it's a lot more uh, action based. Really fun. There's a uh, sequel on the Vita called Shinobi Do 2, which is also very good. 
It's also on PS2. Everybody get ready for some crazy taxi. This is three bucks sometime. Need to print out artwork for it. Really good game. I forget how I played this. It definitely wasn't the PSP version because this version is brand new and sealed. But Shin Megami Tensei Persona 2 Innocent Sin. I just... I used to meddle around with emulators back in the day. I must have emulated this. I just played it. It's... It's out of this world. It's probably the best Persona game. Persona 5 is really, really good. Persona 3 and 4. 3 is okay. First one is good. I think this one might be the best. It was a US exclusive. Like it came out in Japan and the USA. Did not come out in PAL territories, unfortunately. It sucks, but what can you do? I had to order this from Play Asia. It was like 50 bucks. But I, I love it because it's in my collection. I would love to get its sequel, um, Eternal Punishment, I think. It's cool. It's weird. At the end of Persona 2, like, everyone is kind of erased, so it's like, nothing you've done matters. Then in Persona 2, Eternal Punishment, like, everybody comes back in a way. It's very interesting. It's like, they're erased from history, but they're put in a different part of the universe kind of way. It's interesting. That was Battlefront 2. Great game. Aha! My first double! I'll run 2006 Coast to Coast. I will need to put that to the side to sell. Kaloom! I believe I bought this in the UK. I bought it because it looked cute. Ape Escape P. Really good game. The Ape Escape games, they're all worth getting. Just get every single one of them and play through them. Monster Hunter Freedom. This was another one of the uh, early PlayStation Portable games that I had. This came out in 2006, I had it. It's very hard to control because of the PSP's layout, but it's very fun. Another one that I printed out artwork for, Tekken Dark Resurrection. I think I bought this with printed out artwork, but it was really cheap. Really cheap, so I grabbed it. It's good. It's a Tekken game. I remember buying this in an EB Games and trying to talk to the person at the counter, trying to like see what their opinion of it was. Cause I knew the game. I hadn't really played a whole lot, so like, hey, have you heard of this game before? And like, no, I've never heard of this game. They'd never heard of Mist. That's the kind of people that EB Games hires. I believe this was eight bucks back in the day. Came out in two thousand six. Mist has been ported to everything. I've since given it a try, it's not my kind of game. Like, I like point and click games, but not when it's a point and click game that's just pixel hunting. Like, you have to click on the very specific part of the screen, otherwise the game doesn't know what you're doing. Untold Legends, The Warrior's Code. Def Jam, Fight for New York, The Takeover. This was a cool find. Really good game. I love those Death Jam games. Unfortunately, there'll probably never be another one. Because EA only makes stuff that makes money now. Medal of Honor Heroes 2. KO Challenges. I bought this while I was in the UK. It's fun. Uh, it's a mini game compilation. S the Silent Hill Experience. It's a cool game. It says like a Silent Hill comic book on it, and it's just a bunch of like behind the scenes like Silent Hill stuff. It was really worth getting. It was eight bucks. I got a lot of enjoyment out of this. Love the Silent Hill series. Printed out cover for this one because this is another one I bought from EB Games. So it was like sixteen bucks as well. So it's like they sent this to me with just loose disc. Mega Man Maverick Hunter X. The artwork looks fine that I printed out, but it's got but it's printed out artwork and it has no manual. Yeah, this one was $13 plus $2.50 posted, so I paid 15 bucks for a loose disc of this, but I'm pretty sure that's a decent deal nowadays. Not sure if it's held its value. It's a, um, it's a remake of Mega Man X, but it's in 3D. Sonic Rivals 1 and 2. I know John Carter really likes these games. He was going for a full PlayStation Portable set. He really liked those games, so I grabbed those. I think they were $5 each. Uh, the worst Assassin's Creed game, even worse than Syndicate. 
Assassin's Creed Bloodlines, it's just, it feels very empty. It's not very fun to sit down and play. Uh, the classic, Crap the Rapper. I'd love to get this on PS1, but it's kind of an expensive game, so I don't have it. I have it on the PSP instead. It's the exact same game, it's a port. This one was Fort Hollows brand new, or EB Games brand new. Grand Theft Auto, Vice City Stories. Good game. Yeah, what do you want me to tell you about Grand Theft Auto Vice City? Uh, Silverfall, this has some value. This is just a hard to find game. I think I paid like $5 for this because it was on clearance in a place. But they were doing 75% off because they were fucking closing down. Game traders. Yeah, really cool to find. Another just dungeon crawl. I don't know why this one's expensive, it just is. Hot Pixel. This is like a warrior wear, but with Atari characters. It's a lot of fun. Definitely grab Hot Pixel if you can. It's just $3. I remember I bought these for $4 back in the day. The place I bought them from, they wrapped them up in this weird cellophane. Like they put tape over it. So it's like as I was taking off the tape and stuff, it just destroyed the box. So you see the box there is messed up. A platypus. I remember this was a. It still has like tape on the back. And on the front, it's like, I'll never get it off. I'll have to put it in a new case someday. I got these back, way back. I believe it was $4. It's a shoot 'em up but everything is claymation. I believe you can play this online for free, so you don't really need this version. I have no idea why this has never been released to anything else. Castlevania, the Dracula X Chronicles. This is a fully 3D remake of Castlevania X Rondo of Blood. And it's got like, I think it's got all the cutscenes. I believe it has, yeah, the original versions of both Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night. So that's, that's pretty awesome. I know these have been re-released for PS4 now, but this is a 3D version. The only thing is, you can unlock those versions but you have to do it in a weird way, like, you don't, like, it's not like, beat the game and you unlock another game, it's go through the game in a certain way, reach a certain level, fall down a certain chasm, then go to a certain area, jump up through the ceiling, and grab a certain item, and then you will unlock the game. It's very stupid. Final Fantasy Tactics The War of the Lions, I don't like this one. Just, I love strategy RPGs, but I just didn't like this one. Lord of the Rings Tactics, this is five bucks, it's a good game. Another strategy game. Ridge Racer, it's Ridge Racer. Grand Theft Auto, Liberty City Stories, this is five bucks. Every Extend Extra, I really like this game. It's, uh, it's a lot like Res. Like a music puzzle kind of game, kind of rhythm based, very fun. And Key of Heaven, eight bucks. This one is fun. It's an action RPG. It's about 15 hours long. It's worth playing. Right. Harrison Jones's Daxter. I don't know who Harrison Jones is, but hey, I got your game, mate. Half Otter, Half Weasel, All Hero. This was a fun game. Kind of like Secret Agent Clank, where it's a lot like the uh, Jack and Daxter series, but it's very, very humorous. This one is $3. Medieval Resurrection, I'm hoping this goes up in price. I have another copy of it. I think it's... I think this might be a remake of the first game. But don't quote me on that. It's very, very good though. It's got a bad case. The best strategy game, Blood Bowl. Yeah, if you haven't played Blood Bowl, check it out. It's a uh, strategy game about like a uh, futuristic orcs versus humans rugby game. It's very, it's very weird. Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. Complete. Probably the best portable GTA. Coded Arms. Another first person shooter. This one is kind of like Metroid Prime. Very sci-fi-esque. It's a lot of fun. Valkyria Chronicles 2. Looking for the first one. 
Taito Legends Power Up. This is worth getting because it has a few exclusive games on it. It has Balloon Bomber, Crazy Balloon, Camel Tree, and Legend of Cage. Cube, 3D Muzz Puzzle Mayhem. Not played it. Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law. This is a weird game. If I can compare it to anything, it's a bit like, uh... Phoenix Wright, those kind of games, where it's basically a visual novel, but you can... You can make certain choices in various sections. It's very funny, though. Harvey Birdman is hilarious. Ooh, another double. Battlefront 2 there. Loco Roco, this is a lot of fun. This is like, uh, physics. You control these little balls, and as you can join them together to make them bigger. It's a lot of fun, I really like this game. I'm looking for, a uh, Patapon. It's a rhythm action game. Tales of Eternia, awesome game. A straight port of the PlayStation 1 game. They didn't make any unnecessary changes. Didn't make any flashy changes. They just ported over a great game to a new system. And I believe this is the only way to play this in PAL territories. Silent Hill Origins. Complete. Not the best Silent Hill game, but it's not too bad either. It's, uh, it's a weird one. It's supposed to be taking place before the first Silent Hill, and you don't play as, um... I think you play as someone named Trevor, he's a truck driver. It's kind of interesting, like, you beat a boss in that game, then the boss just becomes like a normal enemy. Dragon Ball Evolution, I'm not sure why this got a video game, but it did. I believe this is the only port it got, so it's on the PlayStation Portable. It might be on PS2 as well. It's just kind of weird, because it's not a great game. A little bit like the Budokai games, actually, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's not great. Star Wars Battlefront Renegade Squadrons, that's the third game. SNK Arcade Classics Volume 1, I don't believe they ever released a Volume 2, but this has, what was it? Neo Turf Masters on it, which is the only game you need to play. It's just the best golf game ever. Dante's Inferno, I paid 15 bucks for this. This is how I played this game originally. It's actually a really good game. A lot of people just call this a God of War clone, but it's a really good clone. Neo Pets, Pet Pet Adventures, The Wand of Wishing. Uh, this is a dungeon crawler, so I thought, yeah, I'll buy it. Found it on the cheap. One of the, if not the final game released for the PlayStation Portable, I know there's that Samurai game as well. But Geronimo Stilton in the Kingdom of Fantasy. It's a very interesting game. It's a lot like Professor Layton. You know, you have like the visual novel aspects and then the puzzles. I like it, it's good. And the original game that I had for my PSP, Ratchet and Clank Size Matters. Isn't that cool? I still have it all these years later. Such a fun game. I completed this game at 100%. I'd play through levels like 10 times just to get enough of... Uh, Currency to buy a new weapon. It's so good. I love that game. We're not done yet, though. Middle Gear Acid. It's a strategy RPG. Strategy RPG based around the um, based around the Metal Gear Solid series. It also has a uh, card battling, so it's like you uh, get a set of cards, you choose which card you want to attack an enemy, stuff like that. Different cards have different abilities. EA Replay, this is a weird one that I can only recommend to collectors because it has a bunch of old EA PC games on it. It has Wing Commander, Budokan, Desert Strike, Jungle Strike, Road Rash 1, 2, and 3, Mutant League Football, Bob, and Haunting Starring Poltergeist, Syndicate, Virtual Pinball, and the weirdest one, Ultima the Black Gate. So if you want to play some classic Ultima on your PlayStation Portable while you're on the go, maybe on an airplane or something, check this out. But, I believe most of these are Super Nintendo ports. They're not the original PC games. I don't know if maybe they lost the original PC games somewhere. I know floppy disks didn't last very long. But, a lot of these that you're playing, they're just like, they're bad ports. So it's, it's weird. My favorite P PSV game, Guruman. 
This is such a fantastic game. Adventure RPG, action RPG. You play this little girl who discovers monsters in her house. And then you have to go and battle these other monsters that are like affecting nature. It's so creative. Like if you could imagine a Studio Ghibli movie made into a video game, it would be like this. It's so good, man. I think you can get this on PC as well. Don't quote me on that. It's an insanely good game, though. It's made by Nihon Falcom. He made the Issei game, so it, it's good quality. It's the best game on the PSP. Ridge Racer 2. Midway Arcade Treasures Extended Play. A lot of these collections on the system. Five bucks for this one. Siphon Filter Logan's Shadow. I just sold a copy of this for like seven bucks. No, I think it was like twelve. Good game. Another really good game on the PSP. Afterburner of Black Falcon. Another really good game. Really good arcade style game. I'm not sure if you can get this on any other system. Cool one to have. Final Fantasy IV The Complete Collection. You can get this on like Steam and that, but it doesn't come in a nice case, so why would you? Really cool, I love this game. Really good, really good Final Fantasy game. Like Final Fantasy VI is probably a bit better, just, just like in terms of bringing everything together, but it's also a really good one. Plus it has the uh, After Years and I love this. This uh, It had a secret mission for like 20 years that nobody figured out and then somebody figured out and everybody played it. Like I love stuff like that. And, like there's new stuff in a giant game that just nobody knew about. Like somebody, somebody may have just played the game, found that mission and just never told anybody. So it never made it like a guide or anything. I love stuff like that. Uh, the City of Duodecim 12 Final Fantasy. I haven't played the uh, Dissidia games yet. I know there's one on the PlayStation 4, maybe I'll try that one out. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, not played this one yet, I do need to sit down and play it. I've played Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, I need to get into the rest of them. Lemmings, really good version, I think it's just... I think it might just be a straight port. Uh, two copies of Crisis Core, Japanese copy and Australian copy. Not my favourite Final Fantasy game, and I don't like how the artwork on the Australian copy makes it look like you're playing as Cloud. Like The Japanese one, you can immediately see that's not Cloud. This one, you just see like the Buster Sword and the armor. It's like, oh yeah, you're playing as Cloud, bro. No, you're playing as some geek named Zack. Is it Zack? Yeah, Zack. Fucking geek. Not the best. Grab this pile. This is a good pile. Smart Bomb. Very unique puzzle game. Very difficult. Twisted Metal Head On. This was four bucks in EB Games. Fantastic price. One of the better Twisted Metal games. It's a lot of fun. It's just Twisted Metal. Vehicular combat in a giant uh, arena. Good stuff. God of War Chains of Olympus. They need to make another Twisted Metal game. Come on. Like, how fucking hard would it be to make a Twisted Metal game? For the PS4, it would print money. It would be like a retro game. Got a War Chains of Olympus. Really good game. Fired Up. This is another Twisted Metal kind of game. It's not as good. It just doesn't have the creativity of the other one. And another really good game for the PSP. They had these like retro like remakes that were really good because... There were the retro games, but they kind of updated them in a way that made them seem modern. Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins. This is like Ghosts and Goblins on steroids. It's in 3D. It's... Is it in 3D? Yeah, it's like 2.5D, you know? like It's 3D, but you're still going along the 2D plane, and it's all cartoon graphics. Like You get like super abilities, you still die in two hits, so it's crazy hard. I have not got it anywhere near finishing this game. Ghosts and Goblins is just... I can beat Castlevania, I can beat all of those. It's just Ghosts and Goblins kicks my ass every time. It's one of those games where it has infinite continues, so it's like... It only beats you once you let it beat you. And it beat me. Ooh, 
Another whole copy of Monster Hunter Freedom, that is a double. Echo Crane for two bucks. It's a good puzzle game. It's got like weird perspectives, it's fun. Um, yeah, I remember these. Fantasy Star Portable, I grabbed two copies of this because I got this one for free at a garage sale. Because it did not have a disc inside of it, unfortunately. And I grabbed this one later on, I think it was super cheap, like five bucks. It did have the disc. Fantasy Star is one of those series, I've not gotten super into it. I've played the uh, first one on the Master System, like emulated it, and then the rest of them I just haven't gotten around to yet. I know, I know they're all like, uh, like RPGs but for sci-fi setting. The third one is apparently really weird. It has time travel and stuff, but I have not played this one yet. And I know there's a bunch of like online ones that are different, so they're just weird. I reached the maximum recording time, and I only have five minutes left on my phone. City of Final Fantasy, Socom Fire Team Bravo. Let's get through these. Gangs of London, good game. Rengoku, not played much of it. Star Ocean Second Evolution, I think I found that for like five bucks. Full copy of Tokobot. Need to fix up that case. Come on, we only have five minutes left. We have some heavy hitters. Bust the move Ghost. Star Ocean First Departure, I need to play these damn games. Rugby League, League Challenge, I think it was 50 cents. Dyna Dash. Why are these sticking? SWAT Target Liberty, it's a strategy RPG. And Call of Duty Road to Victory, it fucking sucks. And then the final three here. We have three special edition sets. I got these all on the cheap. Tactics Ogre, let us cling together. Yeah, this is my own personal copy, it's been with me for a long time, it survived multiple, not multiple moves, it survived a moving house so it's not in the best condition anymore. But it's got everything, it's all in there. It's one of my favourite games on the system. Straight port of the PlayStation 1 game. Tactical RPG, you can't beat it. Lord of Arcana, this is okay, it's not a great great game, it's a lot like Monster Hunter. It's got a uh, damaged case, because it survived a move but it is in good enough condition for my collection. It's also a really good game. Um, Soul Sacrifice is a lot like this game. And this game fucking sucks. The third birthday. It's got a damaged case as well. It survived a move. This game is terrible. It takes the Parasite, Be Parasite Eve series. It bastardizes it. It makes it suitable for Western audiences instead of making it good. It sucks. I hate it. It's a third person shooter instead of an RPG and your character loses clothes when she gets hit because... I don't know, monsters love sexy chicks. Alright, that'll be it. Thank you guys for watching. Tell me guys and... Tell me guys? Tell me any uh, recommendations you have for the PlayStation Portable. I'm always looking for good games to get. I have a lot of good games but I could always have more, especially those hard to find RPGs. Like Trails in the Sky I would love to have. Yeah, that's it. See you in my house. Bidding you guys farewell. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.